in this lecture we will mainly discuss on protein sequence databases. So, let us refresh ourselves about the last class. So, you remember what did we discuss in the last class? Yeah, this mainly about the protein structures. So, what is the building block for protein structures? Amino acids, right. So, amino acids are classified into major groups. What are through two major groups? Hydrophobic residues and hydrophilic residues. And the hydrophobic residues we subclassified into different groups. What are the subclassifications? Yeah, so you can have aliphatic amino acids, aromatic amino acids, sulfur containing amino acids, and glycine. For the case of hydrophilic residues, we classified into positive charge, negative charge, and polar, right. So, we have uh, classified based on the amino acid properties. Then we discussed about protein functions. Do you remember what are the different functions we discussed in the last class? Enzymes, antigens, antibodies structural proteins, regulatory proteins, right, send a sweetener, so blood clotting proteins, thrombin, so transporters, right, the hemoglobin. So, we discussed about the various proteins with they perform different functions. Then we discussed about the structures function relationship to understand the functions of proteins, right, the structures will help and mainly the structure of your protein dictates its function. So, it is very important to understand the structural level. So, if you look into the various organization of protein structures, they are mainly classified into four different groups right, primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure and quaternary structure. In addition there are two structures in between them, they are super secondary structures, the combination of different secondary structures plus domains. Let us say in a protein some part of this residues they can fold and they can perform functions, they are called domains. So, what is the primary structure? Right, it is arrangement of different amino acid residues, right. So, primary structure it gives the sequential order of this amino acid residues and secondary structure provides the arrangement of these residues in some specific shape. For example, here this is a kind of spiral shape. So, this is a called alpha helix. So, here you can see this is a kind of ladder. So, this is called beta strand. So, here the next one is tertiary structure, tertiary structure will provide the atomic coordinates of all the atoms in each residue. So, you can get the clear the location of each atoms, right. If you take the XYZ coordinates, you will see where is the location of each uh, atom in a residue, right. So, in the XYZ coordinates. Then the assembled subunits of these tertiary structures that provide the coordinate structures, right. So, let today we will discuss mainly on protein primary structure and where shall we get the information from for the protein primary structures, are there databases available and how to extract the data and how to utilize the data, right. So, I discussed earlier primary structure is a specific combination of amino acid residues in a protein, right. Totally how many naturally occurring amino acid residues? 20 amino acid residues, right, 20 amino acid residues. But these 20 amino acid residues can make various combinations, right. You can see the uh, combination of various uh, possibilities, right. So, is it fine to have any possible combinations or only specific combinations are allowed or possible for protein function? So, this is kind like uh, English uh, dictionaries. So, if there are 26 uh, alphabets, right. So, with these 26 alphabets, you can make various words, sentences, right and you can book these articles and books and so on. Likewise, there are 20 different amino acids, right, they can also be used to make several functional proteins. In the case of these 26 alphabets in English, right, so only some specific words are present in a dictionary. For example, if you take write like this education, right, this is uh, present in the dictionary and this university, this also present in the dictionary. But if you write like this, it has no meaning. Like write like, like, like this, right? So I put U, N, and four, five, six I's and some V's, right? So it has no meaning. It is not available in the dictionary. Likewise, the proteins the formed by different amino acid residues, but there should be some specific combinations, right? And then again, if you see in this chain, right? This is the main chain. So like varying chain. So these are the beads. So this is common for all the amino acids, this is called the main chain, right, you can this is called this main chain. And here the beads are different, 
So, this is called the side chains. So, if you see here uh, same width can repeat again they can come close to each other or they are far, each, far away each other, but nature selects a specific combination of amino acid residues to form a functional protein. Right? In this case you can make any polypeptides, but all polypeptides are not proteins only the specific combination of these polypeptides they form a functional protein. So, I show some uh, I show an example. So, this is the amino acid sequence for human hemoglobin. So, they have the specific combination of amino acid residues and even if we disturb any of these amino acids for example, we discussed earlier right the for the case of right the glutamic acid 60 valine it causes the disease sickle cell anemia. So, likewise if you even if you small changes in a protein that can alter the function of a particular uh, protein sometimes they may lead to diseases too. The combination of this amino acid residues are very important for a functional protein. So, what are the information we know from the primary structure? So, the primary structure gives the linear sequence of amino acid residues. So, it will give you the specific combination of these residues that is we know. And the second one it includes all covalent bonds because when you make two uh, different amino acids right. So, what, what will happen how to combine the two different amino acids? Covalent the by the elimination of the water molecule we form a bond. What is the name of the name bond? Peptide bond right. So, you have the peptide bond. So, when we know the all the covalent bonds between all the amino acids right. Then if you the for relate to arrangement of these amino acids are not specified we do not know where they are located. So, we know only the combinations and we know the covalent bonds. So, now there are various sequences available in the literature when they synthesize a protein right. So, where they are they get this protein sequences right they publish the data in the literature. So, now to understand the features are there any important characteristic features among these sequences? It is essential to have a set of sequences. If you have a collection of sequences, then we can easily know okay, what are the preference of a specific residues in a protein, right? Are there any bias of any specific amino acids? Because we have 20 different amino acid residues, right? Are there any amino acid would prefer to occur more in any proteins or prefer to occur less in a protein and so on. So, what happened? Then the market day off right from the Georgetown University. So, she collected the sequences of various proteins and published a book of atlas of protein sequences. She published very large volumes of books which contain the sequences of proteins right. Later on they changed this information they converted the information available in the book in the form of a database right. This is how they got the database called the uh, protein information resource. Right. There are various databases which contain the information regarding protein sequences like the Munich Information Center for Protein Sequences, right. NCBI protein database and PIR protein information resource developed by Margaret Dayoff right, from Georgetown University. In the meantime the PIR of protein research foundation they also developed to collect the data is from the Osaka University. Then Swiss Prot it is the unique resource for the protein sequences and they created and maintained from Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. So, they have two types of information one is the manually curated sequences and also the translated sequences from the DNA sequences this is called the TR EMBN. Later on they combine every, every, uh, both these major databases like PIR and Swiss Prot right and they formed a consortium called the Uniprot right this is the universal protein knowledge base which contain the information regarding protein sequences plus other information what we can use as a tools. Although these two major databases PIR and Swiss Prot they merge together to share the information regarding protein sequences they develop tools by these groups they maintain by themselves. So, you can share and you can get the sequences from Uniprot, but if you want to use any of these tools there you can use the Swiss Prot or PIR. So, they have different specific tools to analyze these protein sequences. So, then I will explain what are the information earlier they started to collect and how they merge together to form the Uniprot. Protein information resource ok this is PIR right this is the one which initially started from Georgetown University right. So, they collect the data. So, they translate the data available in the book in the form of web resource right and they classified into three different groups. 
one is the protein ontology right this PRO and IPRO class is contains integrated protein knowledge base and the IPRO link this contains literature information and knowledge. Essentially this is the integrated protein information resource for understanding the genomics data, proteomic data as well as systems biology research. So, they try to put it together, so they collected the data and they classified into three different uh, categories and each one presents in a different ways. For example, in the case of protein ontology, mainly what they give, they represent the protein objects with the descriptions as well as the relationship, which they give the different function information. Here in the IPRO class, right, they give the function analysis and the mapping as well as mainly the sequence information. In the link, they give the source for the text mining and as well as the ontology development. You can have the different links with the different aspects like the bibliography mapping and so on. Okay. Then how to use this database? So, the IPRO class, they provides very hard information on various aspects like protein sequence, protein structures, families, functions, interactions, expressions as well as the modifications. Right? So, they give the protein sequence and for each protein sequence they added information regarding other, other, uh, other resources. So, they have various options to search the data, one is the simple search. In this case, you can give any keywords and you can get the data using that specific keywords or they developed advanced search options. Here they have various conditions, so you can give any of the conditions based on the user's choice and the database uses all the information as a query and then provide you the desired output. So, here for this is the simple text, so you can select a database either the PI RSF or IPRO class because IPRO class contains the mainly sequences. So, we click on this IPRO class right? and here there are various options for the query whether you want to search with any specific field or you want to search on any field. So, here we use any field, so then I put human isozyme. Right. So, I want to get the information regarding human isozyme. This way click human isozyme and search, right? you can click on search. So, this will give you the whole picture. So, it will take your query. right? So, last time we discussed about databases. right? So, what is the generally used biological databases? Relational database. Right? So, they, they use the query and they use language they use structured query language right, SQL right this structured query language to pick up the data from the data from the uh, database. So, they use this lysozyme as your query any of the fields right and wherever it finds the name lysozyme in the data that will display the entries. So, if you get there are several entries right these are the protein ID and this is the protein name right. So, they give the length of the protein what is the meaning of 148? Uh, 148 amino acid residues in the particular protein, right? So then the organism, right? Where uh, is the main organ species for that particular uh, protein? And this PAR is of ID, and related sequences, and what are the matched field? Why are the matched field? Because human lysosome is the field we gave. It matched the paper title, right? Sometimes they have a paper title, right? Somewhere you can give the protein name. Work for me here, it matched with the protein name, right? So it matched. Wherever it matched, so it showed where they uh, found the match, right? So, now if you take this one, so click on this, then you can uh, go get to more details on that particular specific protein. So, you go with the IPRO class and they have a link with the different other uh, resources. So, go with the IPRO class, so then we will uh, get the information. So, here we first we give the protein name, so then give the all the other synonyms, all these things, right? Then we get taxonomy. For example, this is the from Homo, uh, homo sapiens from human, right? This is the mammalia. And you can see the lineage is eukaryota, prometozoa, right? And go up to the last one that is the Homo sapiens. They give all the lineage of the particular uh, protein. Then they give the gene name and the different keywords they give, right? Because uh, it is important to have several keywords so that one can obtain the desired information with any different searches, right? You can get from the 3D structures or amyloids or the disease mutation because it contains several disease mutations, disulfide bond, and so on. So you can obtain the specific protein sequences based on various search options. This is why they give various keywords in this uh, particular protein. Then give the function, right? So this is the uh, mainly uh, bacteriotic function, right? So here the tissues and body fluids are associated with the monotype monophase system. So they give the 
specific function of a particular protein. Then you give the cross references, right? So they give the bibliography, DNA sequence. What are the different DNA sequence databases? DDBJ, EMBL, and GenBank, right? So they give the link with the, all the uh, databases, right? They give GenBank, EMBL, or the DDBJ, and so on. So now give the structures. I will discuss in later classes, right? When we have the three D structures. So they give the codes for the protein data bank codes, right? So they give the codes for the protein data bank. Okay, this is called the PDB, right? They, they give the IDs. Then give the family classification, right? For the based on the uh, folding and the other classifications, PFAM domains and so on, right? Then give the sequence. Right? Here, this is the sequence of their particular. Uh, protein right. So, for the human lysosome that is you can see the, the number of uh, residues right in this particular uh, protein. So, now this is the IPRO class you can get from the PAR database. During the same time the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics they also tried to collect the data and they developed database called the Swiss Prot right. Later on Uniprot comes mainly from these Prots because they have the various uh, functional aspects and they collected lot of information regarding protein sequences plus the analysis. So, this Swiss Prot is established in 1986 right from the University of Genova and EMB Data Library. This is the curated database right and the major aspect of Uniprot this has high level of annotation. They give much information regarding a particular protein. I will in the later slides I will explain some of the major aspects of this Uniprot. It provides high level of annotation. For example, they give the description of the protein and the various functions right and the structures are the post relational modifications and different variants, diseases and the interactions and so on. So, give wealth of information for a particular protein. Then second aspect this is the first aspect this is a high level of annotation and the second aspect is it has minimum level of redundancy. The redundancy if you see the sequences they provide minimal. Sometimes you can get the same information from different resources. They try to put in the resources but try to minimize the redundant information right and the third aspect it also have high level of integration with other databases. So, they, they give the links to various other databases in the literature. So, there are three major aspects of this Uniprot. What are the three major aspects of the Uniprot? High level of annotation, minimal level of redundancy as well as high level of integration. So, these are the major aspects. This is the reason why several uh, users for this particular database called the Uniprot database. Then they have another supplemented data this TREMBL this is translated uh, sequences right. This is the computer annotated supplement which contains all translations of the EMBL nucleotide entries which are not integrated into SysProt. Many SysProt they have manually curated the sequence and they provide very accurate information. In addition they also provide the computer annotated sequence from the DNA sequences. This is the reason if you see it has the this is a manually curated data is 0.55 million and this 73.7 million this is the computer annotated sequences and totally we have about 75 million sequences right. This is a good amount of data right of protein sequences. So, you can use uh, this database Uniprot database at the website the uniprot.org you can get the all the information regarding a particular protein. So, welcome to the Uniprot. So, if you want to use a database as we discussed in the previous classes if you want to develop a database right. So, you have to maintain the database it is easy to develop a database, but it is very difficult to maintain a database right. So, there should be a uniform increase of data and there should be a very reliable data right. So, and then there very very clean data right that is very important. So, if you see this Uniprot you can this is the data for the Uniprot Swiss Prot and this is for the TREMBL right. This TREMBL is Swiss Prot. This is the manually curated one, this is the computer annotated one. So, you can see gradual increase of the sequences. They started working on these sequences and this several uh, efforts have been put to curate the data. So, you can see gradual increase in data. Likewise, the TRMPL also they can see the gradual increase in data right. Maybe they might have deleted some of these entries this is the reason there is a uh, slow down and then again it is growing up. So, they have main gradually maintaining the data continuously maintaining the data and the gradually increasing the data. This shows the growth of this database. And if you see the citations, you will get the citations also improving every year because for any protein sequence information one has to use this Uniprot database. So, now if you look into the classification, which type of data are dominant in Uniprot database, right. If you see this is a classification, so mainly you can see the data dominated with which type of organism, which kingdom of life, this is mainly the bacteria, you can see this is the bacteria data, 
this is highly dominant and followed by eukaryota and then virus right? and then little bit and then about the archaea. So, you can see similar uh, preference for the viruses and the uh, archaea. Right? In both cases even for the Swiss fruit entries as well as the tier embryo entries you can see similar level of uh, data mainly dominated by bacteria followed by eukaryota and viruses. Now, the question is there are many proteins in the database what is the average length of the protein. So, there are many proteins right. So, there are what is the average length of the protein. So, what is the average length of the protein? 3115 amino acids based on the all the proteins deposited in the uniprot database. Usually if you look into the sequence length in different proteins in uniprot. So, you can see this is mainly this region. This region means that it is about uh, 100 to 400 residues. Right. Most of the proteins are small protein like proteins or medium range proteins around 200 to 300 proteins right. You can see the higher peak around 250 to 300, 300 proteins right. And some proteins which are quite long which is more than 1000 residues right. When the finally, if you take the average length it is about 315 amino acid residues in each protein. But there is most of the proteins they are in this region. So, there is about uh, 100 to 400 residues. So, now if you look into these different proteins right are there any bias of different amino acid residues. Totally how many amino acid residues? 20 residues right and different classifications polar, non-polar, charge and so on. Are there any bias? Any specific residues are predominantly occurring in protein sequences right. So, here I show the data. So, this is this was this data shows the gradual uh, uh, degrees and here this is uh, classified uh, based on the different groups right. If you see there are some amino acid residues which are highly occurring in protein sequences right. What residues occur dominantly in protein sequences? Leucine, alanine, glycine right. So, here occur, these are the residues which, are, which occur predominantly in protein sequences. When you look into the rarely occurring amino acids, what are rarely occurring amino acids? So, tryptophan and cysteine ok. This data I obtained from few releases ago. This is the current data release one. So, if you see the tryptophan there is just 1.2 percent and for the cysteine the same 1.2 percent. So, highest occurring if you see lysine is 9.8 percent right and the alanine is the 8.9 percent. If all the 20 residues are randomly distributed right, what is the percentage of each amino acid residues? 5 percent right, but here if you see that is not like that right. Some residues are 10 that is double the amount and some residues are only 1.2 right. So, this is mainly due to the structural and function aspect this is very important right for to fold a particular protein into a globular shape as well as to maintain the stability and for the functions. With this hydrophobic residues they tend to form a hydrophobic core that is initiating the protein folding and maintain the stability. Likewise, you can see the sufficient number of charged residues like for example, uh, lysine and arginine right. So, here the lysine and arginine. So, what is the percentage of lysine and arginine? You have 5 percent lysine and arginine. 5.6 percent as well as the uh, polar residues that is serine 3 1 in we can see sufficient percentage because these tend to form the electrostatic interactions as well as form the hydrogen bonds. So, now these residues have specific bias in the any protein sequences. Mm -hmm.